Hi, my name is Tracy Ventura with Soul Essence Healing and Hypnosis. And today I'm gonna share with you a transcript from a hypnosis session that I just had with a client a couple of weeks ago. And this is a session where the person looked into another life and it was not on earth. It's very interesting. So you're gonna wanna stay tuned because it's actually a life where she's a scientist why a scientist who does experiments on humans that her race abducts. So it's very interesting. In case you don't know, the type of hypnosis that I do is derived from something called QHHT, which stands for Quantum Healing Hypnosis Technique. It was developed by the late Dolores Cannon. You can check out her many, many books. She did thousands of sessions and they were truly amazing. But it's where you can look into other lives that you've lived. If you've lived any, I come across people who this is their first life, so they don't always have other lives. But then you also call forth your higher self or your subconscious. And when you do that, you can ask any and every question you want. I see tremendous healings take place for all kinds of physical problems, emotional issues, ask what's your purpose, what can I do to get going on my purpose, why did I choose the mom I did, the dad I did. You can ask for different advice on how to help your children, how to help others around you, what beliefs and thoughts are currently shaping my reality and what could they be to create a better reality can ask about money things, job questions. You can ask, what can I do to be more whole? The list of questions is endless on what you can ask your higher self. And being that you're usually under for about two hours, we get to ask a lot of stuff and get a lot of amazing wisdom that comes from your higher self. So without further ado, I wanna get into this session and reading, I have it all typed out here because I don't wanna add anything to it, subtract anything from it. But just to let you know in advance that once we did finish this session, she didn't, she came out of hypnosis and did not remember a thing. She had to listen to the recording, but we did a debriefing at the end and I told her the various things that she had said and she said, oh my gosh, I said that. And then the particular alien that she looked like, she said, oh my gosh, she didn't even know what it was, had never heard of it. She Googled it and said, oh wow, that's what I look like, huh? So it was very surprising to her. She had no idea, but thought it was the coolest thing ever. So I'm gonna start reading the transcript now of everything that I typed out from her session. So enjoy. Question, tell me what you see as you follow your spirit up. What happens? Answer, I'm landing on some kind of planet. Okay. It looks like there's robots on there or some different kind of, I don't know, it looks like everything is electronic. Question, okay, do you see any people or everything is a robot? No, I see people, but everything is so robotic, like our cars, they fly. Like if you need something, a robot goes and gets it. Like if I'm at a store or something, I don't know, it's just different. Question, and what do you look like? I look like a person. Actually, no, I look like some kind of like an alien. Yes, that's what I look like. Okay, describe yourself. Stand in front of something reflective and describe yourself. Okay, so I'm like a grayish color. I have really big eyes. I'm thin, I have feet, but they're bigger. My hands, I have three fingers. My head is kind of shaped like a, I don't know, not so much a circle, but bigger than a circle. I kind of look like an alien. I think I am an alien. Question, okay, and you said your body is gray? Yes. Do you have any clothing on or no? No. Okay, do you feel male, female, or neither? Neither, I don't know what I am. Does it this feel like a comfortable, familiar place or does it feel like a strange place? It kind of feels strange, but like what I do there is I'm working on people, like actual humans, like in a lab or something. Like we're doing like tests on them and I'm one of the people that try to figure out who they are and what they're doing and why they're there. So would you consider yourself to be kind of a scientist? Yes, I'm trying to figure out their thoughts, their emotions, like how they think and how their brain works. 
how did you get these humans? Did somebody bring them to you? Yes. Okay, did other gray aliens? So what happens is they go into some, I don't know, our spaceships, our little, what do they call them? Like our vehicles, question. Okay. She goes on to say, they go into there and they're gone for like a few hours and then they come back with these people for me to test and it's all kinds of people. It's like women, men, kids, animals even, and we always have one. Is the lab a busy place? Are there lots of scientists working on these people? Yes, so there's like these see-through mirrors, not mirrors, windows, and there's labs all around. Like it, it goes into this big circle and you can see what the other person is working on or who they're working on. Are these humans awake and conscious or are they knocked out or how does that happen? No, they're sleeping. They put them to sleep and they have all these things connected to their head and their like their hearts, their body, their fingers, their toes. But their main goal is to figure out what their thoughts, their vibrations and their feelings are, like how they feel, like what makes them happy, what makes them sad. Question, and why do you guys wanna know how they feel? What makes them happy and sad? Are you as an alien race not able to feel emotions? No, we have no emotions, we just work. Like we try to figure things out on why humans can have such a fun life and happy and cry sometimes and go through tragic moments while we're up here just on a daily same routine. We don't get happy, we don't get sad. We have no feelings. Question, is that a desire? Answer, we have no vibrations. Question, is that a desire for you guys to have feelings and emotions? Yes. Okay. Answer, we want to know how it feels. We want to know everything. We want to know what connects into what is, what it is that makes them feel this way. We want new on our planet. We want to explore those feelings. We want to know how it feels because we have no feelings. It's like we're all the same, but in different I don't know if you want to call them bodies, but like none of us are different. We couldn't tell from each other if we were different or not. Question. So looking at it from an outsider's perspective, how does this alien race, these gray aliens, how did they come to not have any feelings? Have they always been that way or did they evolve into that? Answer. I believe they evolved because the planet that they lived on before was destroyed. So when they came to evolve into this other planet, they decided not to have any feelings because they don't want to feel what they felt before. But when they saw Earth, they saw a lot of happiness. They see people in different ways, like everyone is unique in their own different way and that's what they want. That's what we want. We want that again, even though we were taught not to have feelings, so we don't have to attach ourselves to anything or anyone. So if something in a past life were to happen like that again and our planet gets destroyed again, we wouldn't have to feel that way. But some people are willing, some aliens are willing to risk that. They're willing to risk having feelings to know how it feels to love, to cry, to be happy, to be sad. They just want to know, they just want to feel alive. So are these humans harmed when you have them or do you do harmless tests on them and then return them back to Earth? We don't harm them, no. We just try to figure out their vibration. When we're done, we send them back where they belong. Do these humans remember that they've been captured normally? No. Can some of them remember? We do something for them not to remember, but again, we can't always make sure it's permanent. Some may remember, some may not, but the majority of them do not remember what has happened to them and how long they've been gone for. So what about the animals? Are they returned unharmed also? Yes, they are. And why are the animals studied? Do the animals have emotions that they're also curious about? Yes, they do. Because the animals that we have here have no emotions. They're just like us. We don't give emotion off of anyone. Like our vibration is just different and we would like to have emotion within ourselves and our animals. And we try to figure out what or how the animals get emotion, like how they feel when they're around their humans, how they feel like if they feel sad or when they feel bad or when they get in trouble. But they're not harmed. No, they're not. But they are sent back to where we brought them from. Are they all from Earth? From where I am now? Yes, they're all from Earth. Now, 
This is a question. Now this is, is this something, you know, is this something that these humans or animals agreed to on a spiritual or soul level to participate in before they were born into human and animal bodies? Or is this something that's more against their free will that they're being studied? I believe they choose to come. That's how we pick them out. Their vibrations of their, like their spirits, it like attracts us where to go and who to get. So at the time, they may not know what or why they're being taken, but yes, they have agreed to come and help us figure out what it is we're trying to study. Question, and so do you place any sort of implants in them so you can track them or anything like that? Or is it just studying them and then you're done with them? Answer, no, we just study them and we let them go. There's no tracking. Now tell me about the planet that you lived on before where you guys had emotions. Do you know the name of that planet that was destroyed? It was Mars. It was a beautiful planet. It was amazing, so amazing. Question, so tell me about Mars. It just looked so peaceful. It reminds me of a forest. Like there were animals everywhere, waterfalls, water, trees, land, animals. It was just so beautiful and peaceful. There was no negativity on this planet. It was just so calm and it was home. What was your lifespan when you lived on Mars? Did you have a long life or a short life? I had, it was a short life. It wasn't long at all for me. So was it a very advanced, technologically advanced planet right before it was destroyed? Yes, it was. Now, what happened that it became destroyed? I see attacking like some other species or alien or energy attacking it. What did that species look like? It looked like a lizard, kind of like a lizard. It looks like an animal. Why did they attack your planet? They wanted to take us over. They didn't like that we were, our planet was so humble and everyone got along and our planet was just so beautiful. They wanted to take it over. They wanted to destroy and bring negative into it. They didn't want to see anyone happy. They were just so mean and evil. Question, was it a slow process of their takeover or did it happen quickly? It happened pretty quick. At first, we didn't know what was going on and we tried to negotiate with them. They didn't want to negotiate. And they told us that they were just going to destroy us. And we were such a spiritual planet. We decided to pray and ask for help, but they destroyed us. They bombed us. Question, they bombed you? Yes. What kind of bombs? They look like I couldn't really tell, like it was coming from their little spaceship. Like they just kept on sending all kinds of things down to our planet and they just explode like everywhere and everything. It just happened so quickly. Like if they were planning it for a very long time, but these bombs are big, they were huge. Did anyone escape? No, no one escaped. So how did you get from being, well, let's go back. What did your bodies look like? What did your body look like when you lived on Mars? Was it still the same gray body or did it look different? No, it looked different. It looked more, it wasn't even a body. It was, this is probably going to sound weird, but we look like, uh, like a ball of energy. Not a ball of energy, but it kind of looked like slime for some reason. But it's like we weren't slimy everywhere. It just looked like a big ball of energy. I mean, we had eyes, we had a mouth, but there was no form of body. Okay, did you have families? Yes, we did. We had families. Question, so were you personally alive on Mars when it was destroyed? Yes, I was, and I was trying to protect my family. And all of your bodies perished in the bombing? Yes, they did. Were you scared when that happened? Yes, I was very scared. We would beg them not to do anything, but they wouldn't listen. They didn't care. They were just so evil. They didn't care about the kids. They didn't care about anything. They just wanted to take over. They didn't like the peace that we had or how we were so humble and spiritual. They didn't like that. And so from there, once you died in that physical body, is that when you incarnated as a gray alien? Yes. Did your whole family go with you and become your family as a gray alien or did you kind of go alone? I went alone. And then you all made the decision before you became gray aliens that you would not have any emotions that you're talking about? Yes, we did. We decided not to because it was so terrifying for us. Like we didn't want to feel that way anymore. 
or so we thought. And so you do not know the name of the planet that these gray aliens or the planet where you're a gray alien. Do you know the name of it? It starts with an S. I'm not getting a name. Okay, that's fine. And so do you as a scientist, do you see the same people coming over and over into your lab or is it always totally different people and animals? It will be different people and animals. And when people go back to earth and get in touch with their subconscious through something like hypnosis, do you know, would they be able to remember these? Let's just call it alien abductions. Answer, I believe so because once they start realizing their meditation and their power, for some reason, it connects us to each other. But where we're at, where I'm at, the vibration is so like high, but we're so used to that vibration and theirs is so low. But there are times when we do connect and try to communicate. It's like they remembered our vibration for some reason. Question, and so are you able to communicate with them when they're under hypnosis or when they're meditating because their vibration is higher? Yes, I am. And so that's how we do our studies. Our vibrations are on the same level. So we upgrade their vibrations and that's how we figure out how their emotions and their thoughts are created question, but I thought the Greys didn't want to have any emotions because they didn't want to feel that again. Has there been a change of mind? They changed their mind on that? Yeah. A answer. We are willing to take a risk to have those feelings again. Question. And as a gray alien, you may have answered it, but I don't remember. Do you also have families? I do not have a family. It's like we're all the same person doing the same thing over and over and over. I did not consider that family, no. Question, so kind of robotic? A, correct. Question, so would you say that the gray aliens are programmed to a certain extent? Answer, they are programmed to not have feelings, but they want to risk whatever it is they're programmed with to have those feelings again. That's why they abduct these humans and do these testings on them because they're willing to risk whatever it is to go through the pain or go through the laughter or go through whatever it is that humans go through emotionally. They want to feel that. They want to be one and they want to be unique. They want to be able to share things with other people or other aliens. Question, so would you consider that to be your dominant race? Is that where you predominantly live when you're not incarnated on earth or is it some other planet, your soul? Answer, I believe it's some other planet. Question, and so is your lifespan as a gray alien, would you consider it to be shorter or longer? Answer, longer. Question, and why did you choose to be a gray alien? Why did your soul choose to be a gray alien for some point of time? Answer, because I wanted to help and fulfill those who wanted to feel emotions. I wanted to help them test and help those to realize what we need to do or how we need to do things to feel emotions. My goal was to help those aliens that were out there to get the emotional part that they never had ever. Like if that was their first time on our planet, I wanted to help them. I helped to help have them have feelings, to help them to know what it was like, how to feel human. Question, and do some of those great aliens channel or speak through humans when they're able to raise their vibration? For instance, the gray, gray alien named Bashar speaking through a man on earth named Daryl. Answer, yes, they can. And he's not the, not the only one that can do that. There are many others out there that can do that as well. Question, and is that an agreement on a soul level that these people agreed on a soul level before they incarnated on earth that they would be a channel for particular grays? Yes. And why do they do this? Why do the grays do this? Answer, why do they do what? Why do they channel through humans? Why do they speak through humans to others? They speak through humans because they want humans to know what life is. They want humans to know that everything is an illusion. What do you mean when you say everything is an illusion? Answer, like whatever is on earth is not real. It's like a game. Question, so how do emotions play into the fact that it's a game? Does it make it seem more real? Answer, it does. People go through these emotions through their life to make them feel like it's real, but really it's not. It's like they're making it up. 
Like they can make up situations where they're bad or good or happy or sad. Like it's all within them and they don't realize that. Like other people can't make them happy, but they don't know that. They make themselves sad for whatever situation they put themselves in. Question, why do they put themselves in differ different situations to make themselves sad or happy? Answer, maybe to feel the pain because they don't realize they're not awake. It's like tunnel vision. You know, when you're so used to something and you know, if you do that something and do it over and over and you know the outcome of it, it's going to be the same thing until they realize that they have power over themselves and they don't need to depend on anyone or anything to make them feel any kind of a way. Like the happiness is within themselves. The sad is within themselves. It's like every emotion is within themselves. They give people power, things, power over how they feel. Question, you mean they give their power away? Yes. Question, with these emotions? Yes. Question, do you know how they can stop giving their power away? Would it be just to look at everything neutrally without emotion? Is that how they would do it? Answer, yes. If they didn't pay attention to anything as going on in the outside world, then they wouldn't give any emotion out. So they would just stay neutral, just go on with their day and not worry about what's going on in the real world or life or whatever they call it. Then they would be fine. Question, but wouldn't that be kind of like being a gray alien then, not having any emotion? Answer, it's kind of like helping them control their emotions. So when you have emotions, you control your own. That's what we're trying to figure out here. We want emotion, but we don't want to give anyone any power over our emotions. Like we want to be able to feel happy because of us, because of ourselves, not because of what other people are doing or saying or wanting from us. So we're trying to help them control their own emotions with themselves and not have to worry about the outside world and what's going on. Question. So is it possible for a gray alien to be programmed in a negative way and be used, for instance, by another alien race that is maybe sinister or negative or destructive? Answer, yes, it's possible. Does it happen? Yes, and I believe those are the aliens that came and destroyed Mars. They were programmed and they were willing to be programmed that way. Question, was it a soul agreement that happens for a gray alien to agree to be programmed negatively and for evil? Answer, they are programmed to not have feelings. I think I lost my page. Hold on. <laughs> um, yes, there's evil anywhere. And do the greys carry out the evil without emotion? Just like you're saying the greys on the planet where you are at, they have no emotion. Sorry about that. I thought I had my pages all together. Answer, no, they feed off of doing things like that. Like if they hurt someone or destroy stuff, it makes them even more fulfilling. Like that's what makes them happy is the bad things that they do. And so the more they do it, the more they feel good, the more they're excited, the more they want to do more and more and more and hurt people. It like energizes them. Question, so are there gray aliens who are on earth right now doing evil work? Yes, there is. Are they in human form or how do they work on earth? Yes, they're humans. They try to get people to do bad things to other people and make them feel good about it and tell them that it's the right thing to do that that's what the earth should be about. You know, everything is their way. It's like they're right. It's their law and it's happening now. Question, so do these people have positions of power? Let's say, for instance, politicians or people in the news media? Answer, yes, they do, especially in politics. They fight for what they want and they get other people on their side and these people agree with them. It's kind of like they're manipulating all of them that what they're doing is right and what the others are doing is wrong. And these people play along and they do what they say because they're so good at it. They're so, so good at convincing them that everyone else is wrong and that they're right and that they're trying to help the people, but really they're not. They just want to destroy. 
as soon as they are done destroying everything, they could care less about the people that they helped or had them fall into manipulating them. It's like there's main ones out there and they're spread everywhere. Question, who are some of the more well-known politicians who are actually greys programmed to do the work of evil? Can you name any names? Answer, someone that is close to Donald Trump that acts like he's on his side, but really he's not. Question, is it the vice president or someone? Yes. The vice president? Yes. Does Donald Trump answer? And then he has his little crew that helps him as well. Question, does Donald Trump know that he is a great alien programmed for evil? Answer, I think Donald Trump has some kind of feeling that he is, but he's still trying to figure him out. He's not completely 100% sure, but he has an idea that he's not all the way for him. Question. So the greys that are programmed for evil, are they able also, you said sometimes they're, are they born into human bodies? Are they made clones and then they replace people? Are they a double? How do the greys that are programmed for evil come in and do these things? Like for instance, the vice president. Answer, I believe they're cloned. What I see is that, let's say one is on earth and he is a bad person. So he starts doing bad things and then all of a sudden he dies. So then that soul goes into another person and does the same thing over and over until it reaches to the top where it actually gets the world convinced that what he's doing is right. So I believe they go into other people's bodies. Question, so is the soul that was born into the vice president's body, is it a different soul now than what was originally born in his body? Yes. Question, and it's an evil gray that is currently in his body? Yes. Question, so how did that soul end up leaving? Is it the same body or is it a different body? It's the same body. So that soul left because whatever he needed to learn from whatever he had to when he was brought down here to earth was done. And as soon as his soul left, another soul was supposed to come in, but the gray one came in question. So it was basically hijacked? Yes. Question. So the evil greys will basically, when there was supposed to be another walk-in soul coming in, walking in, the greys would hijack that process if it was someone that could benefit them? Answer. Yes. It's just like they're waiting, waiting for souls to leave so they can come in and hijack. That is correct. Question, and these greys are programmed to work for the lizards. I'm sorry, here's the question again. Are these greys programmed to work for the lizards that are currently taking over Earth? Yes. Question, the same ones that took over Mars? Answer, yes, because they're trying to take over Earth. Question, and are the greys that you're part of as a scientist are they doing anything to try and help Earth with this process so the same thing doesn't happen to Earth? Or are they just kind of off doing their own thing? Answer, we try to help, but we're told that if we helped, we would get destroyed again and again and again and again. We do try to communicate with the humans, but only a few humans can communicate with us so that we can give them messages but it's something that's really discreet. We cannot let the evil ones know what we're doing because if we do, they will come and attack us. Question, so what advice do the greys have as far as Earth fighting this battle so they can win? Do they have any advice? Answer, their advice is to be more spiritual, to open up to others and to not believe everything and don't get manipulated into whatever is being said by people that do have power. And I know a lot of people are listening to the people that do have power because they think they're right and they're all just being manipulated. So if we can have people out there that can help awaken everyone or anyone or as much people as they can and know that it isn't real, it's not okay and wake them up before and wake them up from what these people are trying to do to us or to earth, then I think we would be okay. Awakening the earth is what we need. We need kindness love, happiness, but there's so much evil going on right now. Question, and how does awakening people save us from the evil lizard people that are trying to take over earth? How does awakening do that? Answer, 
because the awakening clears the mind. It helps them to get out of the manipulation that these evil people are doing to us. It's like if you snap your fingers, that awakening, you just awaken and the manipulation would be gone. Question, and so what would happen to the lizard people if enough people awakened? Would they just disintegrate or A, disappear? Yes, they would leave. Question, so they're forced off planet? Yes. Question, do you know where they would go? Would they go to another planet? Would they go to a black hole? Where do they go? Do you know? Answer, they would go to another planet that they see that's happy. They want control. They want all of the planets. They want to be the ones in charge of everything. So they will move on to a next one and a next one. There's millions of them. And to the next planet. Question, do you see them ever being able to be stopped? Answer, as of now, no. Not unless all of the planets combined can have this huge awakening, this huge lifting of souls and spirits to light and love. But as of now, not all the planets know how to do that. Question, is Mother Earth, Gaia herself, is she helping in this battle against the lizard people? Answer, yes, she is, she is helping. Question, how is she helping? Answer, she's sending out people to all these planets to help awaken, but sometimes they don't get to, they don't get to have people awaken. Some people just ignore the other people, and so they're not spreading the word as she thought they would because they're so manipulated, but she's still trying. Question, what about the name Nancy Pelosi? <clears throat> does that sound like someone or feel like someone who is also a gray program? Or does that feel someone who's more like a lizard person or none of the above? Oh, she's definitely a lizard. I can see the evil in her. I can see the lizard in her. What about Barack Obama? He is also a lizard. What about Michelle Obama? She is also one of them. What about Hillary Clinton? Yes. What about Bill Clinton? Yes. What about George Bush Jr. and George Bush Sr.? Yes. What about Ronald Reagan? No. What was he? What do you mean by what was he? Well, was he good? Was he evil? No, he was good. Do you see John F. Kennedy Jr. in the picture anywhere in the fight for Earth right now, either in physical form or in spirit form? Answer, I believe it's in spiritual form. Question, John F. Kennedy Jr., A? I mean, answer, uh-huh. Question, is he here as a guide? Answer, yes. Question, can you tell if President Donald Trump is the same soul that was born into his body or was he also a walk-in soul? Answer, I believe he was a walk-in. Question, what can you tell me? Can you tell me anything more about that? Did the original soul not have a plan to come here and fight darkness, but the walk-in soul did and they agreed to trade places? Or can you see anything about that? Answer, I believe he's trying to do good. I believe he's a totally different person. Like, he's actually fighting for good. He wants good, but he doesn't know if he can trust anyone because he doesn't know who they are anymore. That people try to make it seem like whatever happens is his fault and it's not. Question, does he have some people around him who are trustworthy? Answer, he has a few. Question, does he have a lot of help from the spirit side? Answer, he does now, before he did not. And that's where it ended, and I decided that was enough time talking about these things. Hopefully I'll bring her back and we'll learn more. But for now, that's all I wanted to share, and I hope you enjoyed the session and learned a lot.